Life is so emotional. I have three names, Holly, Grace, Marie. I'm the youngest of five children. I moved at least seven times between Mexico and the United States during the first 18 years of my life. I know two languages fluently and I dabble in two others. <laughs> English and Spanish are the languages I'm fluent in and then I know a little bit of German because I took it in high school and I know a little bit of Nahuatl which is basically Aztec. If you guys don't believe me, here goes a phrase. In German I can say Ich möchte ein Erdbeweis. Gleich um die Ecke. Wir gehen zurück nach Hause. If you know what that means, let me know. <laughs> when I was 14 years old, I decided to memorize the first 50 digits of pi with my friend Doris, partly because I love memorizing, partly because I love numbers, and partly because we're both just insane. And then a couple years ago, just to prove that I hadn't lost the ability, I went ahead and learned the next 50 digits. You guys can ask me later if you actually want to hear all of them. I like going through old checklists and checking off things that I got done but forgot to check off just to feel extra accomplished. I'd say I seem a little bit disorganized and sporadic, but I'm organized in my own way. This is how I pay my bills every month, and so far, so good, I have almost perfect credit. I consider myself to be a very nostalgic person, and I often get lost in my own thoughts. Boredom's not really something I suffer from, ever. One time I was listening to a Marcus Schultz song in my car, and I'm gonna play it so you guys can get the full effect, and I literally started crying just because I was so grateful for the life I've been able to live and all the people I've been able to meet. I usually cry out of some sort of overwhelming positive emotion and not the opposite. I feel like I'm just a really sensitive person and sometimes it has to manifest itself in tears because life is so emotional. I worked as a Spanish radio DJ for eight years and I'm grateful for that job because that is how I met my husband. My husband and I were Facebook friends before we were real friends and the first thing that stood out to me about him was his excellent grammar and punctuation and spelling. I grew up wanting three things out of adulthood, a bicycle, a trampoline, and a down comforter. We now have the down comforter thanks to my parents. Speaking of growing up, I was never one of those people that really wanted to get married until I met my now husband. As a kid and as a teenager, I was extremely awkward about boys. Like as soon as I found out they liked me, I stopped liking them. Probably I'm gonna have to blame my big brothers on this one. They teased us relentlessly. My very first date was in preschool. A kid named Stanislao Fiederholtz from my school asked me to go watch the Muppet movie. And it might've been actually the first movie I ever saw in my life. I was so embarrassed that I invited my sister to tag along with us. <laughs> I grew up without a television, and no, I don't feel like I'm better than everybody else for having done so, but I do feel like I was able to be really, really creative as a kid because I had nothing else to do. My brother and sister and I used to love the tape recorder, and we would make tons of stories complete with sound effects and everything. We would interview people. We just loved being able to record something and then go back and listen to it and laugh later. Possibly related to the fact that we grew up with no TV, I really, really, really loved commercials and would try to watch them every chance I got. Possibly tied to my fascination with commercials, I currently work in advertising as a copywriter and I really enjoy it. I suppose I'm a bit of an auditive learner, AKA listening and being able to mimic what I hear. Therefore, piano lessons were very frustrating for me because I could hear the song and play it, but I could not understand what the little balls and lines meant and try to translate that into a song. Actually, when I was four, I figured out how to play Chariots of Fire and I would make my six-year-old sister play the bottom note dun, 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 and I would play the melody. And when my mom wanted to show off my skills to my grandma, I remember being so embarrassed. I was thinking like, this is so easy. I was four. I grew up with the most encouraging mom who would always tell me that I have the best ideas, even if they probably weren't that great. <laughs> A few times in my early teens, my friends in Arizona and I put on these elaborate Christmas programs for our parents, complete with camels cut out of refrigerator boxes, dancing elves, Mary, Joseph, and the baby Jesus, angels, the whole nine yards. So my sister tells me that as soon as I learned to speak, I pretty much sounded like an adult because I was surrounded by adults and older children. But after I went to preschool in Arizona, I came back speaking baby talk because I thought it was just so cool. <laughs> I'd say I'm a moderate adrenaline junkie. When I was 17, I crossed underneath this extremely, extremely high bridge that's probably like a quarter of a mile long with two of my cousins who are equally as insane as I am. It went across a gigantic ravine. Let's just say that if we had accidentally tripped, we would have fallen to our deaths. I've gone bungee jumping on four separate occasions and I've jumped at least 10 times. I absolutely love it. And if I get tired of working in advertising, 
I might turn into a bungee jumping instructor. I'm a big fan of finishing things and began a tradition of writing in a journal when I was about 14. I filled at least 10 journals, front to back. I love writing, I love words, and I place a high value on them, which is probably one of the reasons why liars infuriate me because they're basically removing the value from those words. In my family, eating a lot is almost a virtue, and when I was 10 years old, I would have secret eating contests with my dad. If he served himself more food, I'd have to serve myself more food, and I always had to keep up with him. <laughs> I'm one of the few people you'll probably ever meet that flunked kindergarten. Well, I got held back because I didn't know Spanish. So yes, I had to do kindergarten twice. When we moved back to the US, I skipped third grade to try to catch up with everybody else. And I secretly thought that I was probably mentally slow, but nobody wanted to tell me. I realized that if I were to be mentally slow, nobody was gonna just tell me. And that's why they were acting so condescending and saying, you're so smart. And I thought, you know what? They're probably just trying to trick me so that I have to work more and go to like these classes called Reach and all this instead of just doing fun stuff like making prickly pear jelly. I consume coconut oil every single day and I love that stuff. If I had the money, I would definitely want to have a full-time masseuse. I think that all four of my siblings are smarter than I am and between my sister and my brother, they taught me how to solve the Rubik's Cube with really cool stories and really interesting explanations. One Thanksgiving when I was about 11, I ate so much that I felt like I was actually pregnant with triplets and I remember the whole family going off on a walk and saying, Holly, don't you wanna come with us? And I felt so miserable that I lay on the couch wallowed in my misery and promised myself that day that I would never, ever eat myself into oblivion again. I used to create my own magazines where I would write the articles and try to come up with clever ways to sell the fake items inside. I used Invisalign for two years and once it straightened out all my teeth, I never wore my retainers again and I'm pretty sure I'm almost back to where I started. <laughs> I'm a huge believer that your attitude is more important than your circumstances. I kind of realized this as I would get pulled around to different cities that I didn't necessarily want to live in at the time as a kid. And one day I just decided, you know what, I'm gonna be happy because I don't wanna be miserable. It's that simple. There are certain things you can't choose, but you can choose your attitude. When I was in sixth grade, my best friend Lisa and I would save up what little money we had and spend it all at a store called Plasticos Beto. Literally, all they had in this store was plastic, rolls of plastic, different colors, different widths, and we would make everything out of it. We made a seesaw out of a table flipped on its side. We made a volleyball net out of plastic and rope. We actually even tried to make a water slide on a sloped edge on the roof with plastic, of course. And then we had the dream of creating a pool out of cement and then filling it with plastic so we could put water inside. That one never happened. I like lots of ginger with my sushi. Lots, like a bucket of ginger. I hate dry food, I can't handle it. I don't like dry cake, I don't like dry sandwiches. I remember one time I was starving and somebody had brought in and out and when I discovered that they didn't bring ketchup, I immediately lost my appetite and I couldn't eat. The qualities that attract me to other people is if they're curious, if they're appreciative, if they're observant, and if they allow life to surprise them every once in a while. Family means everything to me. And with that being said, we really don't keep in touch very well, but when we do chat, we laugh, we reminisce, we philosophize, it's amazing. I love my family and I would do anything for them. I grew up with such a wise dad who would answer absolutely any question in the most thoughtful and well-rounded way. He would always talk about different points of view and he would actually open up a conversation rather than just ending the question with a straight answer. I so appreciate that about my dad. My one addiction is coffee. I eat an avocado a day and an apple a day. Not on purpose, I just love them. I believe in God. It's just impossible for me to look at humans and the emotions that we're capable of feeling and not think that there's some sort of intelligent design behind our creation. I'm very intrigued by the idea of coming up with one statement to sum up life, and actually several statements, depending on how you're slicing the pie, if you will. My favorite so far comes from a personal experience that I'll probably tell you guys about later, but it goes like this. Life is like driving down the freeway at 70 miles an hour with your hood flipped up. You can't see what's coming in the future. You can look out the window to see what's happening in the present, but you can't really make much sense of it. It's kind of blurry and happening too fast. And events only start making sense as you look in the rear view mirror, back toward the past, and see how they all fit together into the big picture. I guess that's it for 50 Things About Me. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope I didn't bore you. Okay.